Hey everybody, here is one of the friction welded shafts where we have actually left the weld intact without doing a uh, prep on the weld surface afterwards. Obviously this uh, is outside of spec, so this shaft is actually not able to be used in a rotating assembly due to the fact that the uh, weld hasn't been ground and uh, prepped after the actual weld process. This is basically an example of an electron beam weld. Um, it's done in a vacuum known as CVE. And uh, I have left this unprepped for purposes of just showing you guys what the actual weld looks like, where the weld is situated, so you guys can actually get an idea of exactly how this looks. Um, we're going to inspect this weld under a microscope quickly. We're going to just zoom in and just show you what the weld itself looks like. And... Um, then you'll be able to see exactly how we manufacture all of our shafts with regards to any of the uh, turbochargers, OEM or performance that we basically have under the TurboDirect stable. Okay guys, so this is pretty much your weld that's on the screen at the moment. What you see in the middle there is actually the weld. Um, I'm just turning the shaft around so you can actually see that there's uh, obviously the weld is in the middle of the screen there. You can obviously clearly see what it looks like. It's really, really small. It's probably about a millimeter wide. Um, and you'll notice that there's no oxidization and there's no thermal discoloration. The thermal discoloration is due to oxidization of the two materials during welding. So when you do a weld under a vacuum, there's no oxygen present. There's no possibility for any oxidizations or, or, or oxidization or inclusions that could possibly introduce to be introduced into the actual weld or join so uh, this is a really really great way of doing a weld on two materials under a vacuum um, as you can see the um, as I'm just rotating this we'll get back to the start position of that of that weld shortly you won't even be able to notice where the start or the the end of that weld actually is and because the weld sits proud on top of higher than the actual two surfaces it, it allows us to do a final grind in preparation for the last or the final clearance that is required before the uh, shaft gets uh, um, completely balanced so that is basically that guys um, that's the edge of the turbine. There you can see the striations from the, the, the basic machining to get the two shaft uh, surfaces into, into spec. And then as we come across to where the ring groove is, you'll actually see this, excuse a little bit of oil on there. That's why it's a little bit blurry. But you'll actually see that uh, the surface, let me just wipe it quickly. Uh, the surface is a lot smoother because uh, in comparison to the striations you see between the weld and that uh, ring groove, obviously because that's already been final ground. Uh, to size. Now I'm not sure if you guys know this but what basically happens is this entire shaft, the length of the shaft is prepared, machined, um, threaded and brought to final size before the weld occurs. Once the weld occurs the last little bit of prep work that needs to be done is the weld itself plus the striations on either side of the weld need to be uh, ground down to the uh, correct surface roughness which is measured by RZ and RA. Obviously, you've heard me talk about that before. And obviously, then the shaft will then go for um, uh, balancing and it will be then assembled into whatever rotating assembly, CHRA, or packaged directly as, uh, as if it was going to be sold as a loose component.